Good morning. Uh, this is the first video that I'm going to do on the uh, first booklet of the Upper Sixth Year 13 or A2 Biology. Uh, so it's in the Inheritance and Evolution booklet and I'm going to start on co-dominance and multi-allelism. So we'll explain what is meant by those or describe what is meant by co-dominance and multi-allelism um, and then look at some examples of genetic crosses that involve uh, these two uh, types of inheritance. Okay, so firstly, a, uh, a definition. So co-dominance uh, involves uh, inheritance when both alleles are expressed in the phenotype. So two, uh, two parents uh, each uh, pass on one allele, and in the phenotype of the offspring, both of those alleles are expressed. And that can be in two different ways, but we, we lump the two together using this phrase co-dominance. However, if you look it up on online, you may see um, uh, descriptions of co-dominance or sometimes incomplete dominance. Now for, uh, for the AQA, uh, A-level specification, we can just lump those two things together as co-dominance, meaning that both alleles are expressed in the phenotype. Okay, and that can be via this blended effect. Uh, for example, in snapdragons, there are um, alleles that code for uh, a red phenotype. So with co-dominance, we often use uh, a larger symbol to represent the, uh, the gene, and then a smaller symbol in uh, superscript above that to represent the allele. So a capital R with that C. Okay, so that is the allele for the red, and the allele for the white is that capital C again, C for colour, and then W for the, capital W for the allele. And we see this in snapdragons, uh, red snapdragons, which would obviously be C capital R, C capital R, and white, C W, C W. Um, each of those would uh, pass on one of their alleles, and the pink snapdragons would have the genotype CR, CW. Okay, so they are heterozygous here. Now, both of those alleles are expressed in this blended effect. So red and white snapdragons will produce pink snapdragons. Now actually this blended effect is um, is what we refer to as, or it's correct term, is incomplete dominance. But as I said before, you don't need to be able to distinguish between incomplete and co-dominance. Um, we just lump the two things together. Another example, so there's a blended effect, and there's another example is when both phenotypes are present. And we see this in the ABO blood grouping, where two individuals, uh, one uh, blood group A and one blood group B, may have an offspring. So let's imagine that the uh, two parents are homozygous for their blood group alleles. So uh, the I here. So is the immunoglobin, uh, and the A represents the allele. So just like the the, uh, the large C and the R or the W, here we have the I to represent the, the, the wider phenotype, and the A is the allele. Okay, so if we imagine that um, one parent, blood group A, and another parent, blood group B, they may have an offspring, or they would have an offspring, you can see now, that would be blood group AB, and they would possess 
both of those alleles. Now in the blood grouping, blood group AB, that means they have the <coughs> antigen A and antigen B on their uh, on the surface of their red blood cells. Now we'll go back to this to uh, to blood groups a little bit later on. Okay. So when both phenotypes are present, this is really what we mean by co-dominance. Incomplete dominance is where there's this blended effect. Okay, look. Okay, so here's that example I've read through before. We can see there the red flowers uh, are CRCR CR for their genotype, produce red flowers, white flowers, uh, capital CW, capital CW for the two alleles for white flowers, and then the blended effect is co dominant offspring with pink flowers. Now, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to include the letter representing the gene. So, in this case, that C, well, it stands for colour. So that is the gene. Okay, and you must show the gene as well as <coughs> the allele. So either R or C for colour and W for the um, for the allele. Okay, so there's the red allele and the white allele. Okay. The reason this is important is because when you come to do these in the exam, it's likely that you'll need to include the gene and the allele uh, for maximum marks. Now, in some cases, that might not be the case, and there may be some leniency, but that's not all. That isn't always the case, and it would be a real shame if um, if your biological understanding was good enough to answer the question, but because you hadn't included the uh, the letter to represent the gene, you missed out on the marks. Okay, here we can see. Um, uh, two genetic cross diagrams. This is the one that I showed earlier on. So we have the parental phenotypes, red flowers and white flowers. Parental genotypes, where well, they must be CRCR CR, or CWCW. CW. After meiosis, we know that there is a, a segregation or separation of the, the two alleles. The gametes down here, represented by that circle surrounding them, will each contain one of those alleles. So this is showing that the male gametes are CR, CR, or contain the CR allele. Female gametes contain the CW allele. All four, or 100% of the offspring will be pink flowers. In the Following generation, if you were to take two of those pink flowers and cross them, well now we have uh, the heterozygous genotypes, CRCW, crossing with CRCW. After meiosis, that's going to separate out those two alleles. And what we find is this: uh, the phenotypes produced are in a one red two pink, one uh, white ratio, or uh, probably a safer way to represent that as a percentage or as a fraction, so 50% or half pink flowers, one quarter or 25% red, and one quarter or 25% white. Okay, sometimes it might ask for the ratio, and you could say it is a one, two, one, red, pink, white. Okay, so be careful to look at the question to find out exactly how they want those phenotypes uh, to be presented. You can see it in your notes. This is the example that we give in the notes. It's in the F1 generation. <clears throat> uh, we end up with 
uh, one red, two pink, and one white. Okay. Likewise in uh, incarnations, red and white homozygous parents produce pink flowers in the F1 generation. So again, it might be expected that with the carnations as well, we'd use the same oops, uh, the same letters to represent the alleles. Like so. And then we get that. Uh, one white, two pink, one red, or 25% Fifty percent for pink, twenty-five percent for red. Okay, so some example else here. These uh, this codominance. In fact, this is um, this is true codominance, where both of the alleles are, are produce fit phenotypes, and we see these in roan cattle and roan horses. So, uh, pure breeding, uh, red, it's a little bit confusing here because I think these are two balls, but anyway, uh, pure breeding uh, uh, red cattle and pure breeding white cattle would produce this roan pattern. So in fact here, here we have, if you look carefully at the, at the color of the hairs, here we have the red hairs, here we have the white hairs, and they are both expressed. Um, so rather than that blended effect of getting pink hairs, in fact what you get is this sort of a mosaic pattern of red and white. Now it's more difficult to see in the horses, but it's exactly the same um, uh, situation where the red hair and the white hair are both expressed, and they, uh, they appear blended from further away, but if you look carefully, the hair is either all white or all, all red. And we can see that here on, uh, on a different flower where both the, uh, the red colour is expressed in the petal and the white petal. Rather than producing a pink petal, both are expressed. Okay. Just as a little reminder, I can't emphasise how important this is enough, here we can see that the, uh, the gene it's represented here by an H for hair. The allele is represented by a, a capital letter in superscript, so R or W. Okay. Sickle cell anemia is another example of this. So sickle cell anemia uh, is the, uh, the gene which determines uh, the shape of haemoglobin can either be uh, a normal gene or it can be the sickle, sorry, a normal allele or the sickle allele. Um, with the sickle allele, it results in the red blood cells having this sickle shape. Okay, um, They are able to carry less oxygen uh, and, they, and the red blood cells also form this sickle shape and are more likely to form clots and aneurysms. <clears throat> so we see sickle cell, the prevalence of the, uh, or the frequency of that uh, HBS allele, that sickle allele for haemoglobin, is much greater in regions where we find higher um, prevalence or frequency of malaria. And there is some um, advantage to possessing a sickle allele in these regions because the uh, the plasmodium uh, the parasite that uh, causes malaria it has a reduced survival chance with sickle cells okay so codominance in sickle cell anemia we have the HB Hemoglobin normal allele, HB for hemoglobin, sickle allele, and they produce a normal cell and a sickle cell. So the genotype, HB superscript N, 
HB superscript N would be normal. The sickle cell trait is the heterozygous. So uh, HBN, one normal allele, and HBS, one sickle allele. And then a person with uh, sickle cell anemia is homozygous for the HBS uh, alleles. <clears throat> so, just an example. Of, oh, probably should go down there. The uh, sickle cell anemia uh, is very dangerous and is likely to cause uh, is ca cause death. Obviously, the normal phenotype um, is healthy. The sickle cell trait can be an advantage in regions where there is a higher frequency of, um, of malaria because it means some of the cells become sickle shaped whereas others are normal so the, the plasmodium that infects the uh, red blood cells where there are fewer normal cells and therefore in some areas where there's really high prevalence of malaria having the sickle cell trait can be a selective advantage. Okay, so a woman with a sickle cell trait marries a man with a sickle cell trait. Uh, what is the chance of the first child having sickle cell anemia? Well, again, it's one quarter. Okay, they would need to be HBS, HBS, or homozygous for that HBS. So there's one quarter. Uh, you may be asked, what is, the uh, what is the chance or probability that a first child sickle cell anemia and is male, for example? Well, if that was the case, it would be one quarter times one half, so one eighth. That's the typical kind of question that you might be, might be asked. Okay. Just change this a little bit. So that is uh, codominance. Now, uh, codominance is also, also exists in blood groups. Uh, we've looked at that already. We mentioned that the um, uh, that the blood group A and blood group B can both be expressed or the allele for A and the allele for B can both be expressed in the blood group AB. Now, the reason for that is because uh, they are both codominant. But the ABO blood group is an example of multiple alleles. Now, multiple alleles is where some genes have more than two allelic forms, so more than two different uh, alleles, more than two alleles, um, are uh, determine the uh, the phenotype. So whilst there are only two chromosomes in a homologous pair, only two alleles can be present in the single organism. So uh, whilst there may be more than two alleles, each individual will only actually have two alleles in their genotype. It just depends on which alleles they inherit, uh, which determines their, their phenotype. So multiple alleles occur in human ABO grouping system, blood grouping system. So we've looked at this one already. Um, it's important to know that uh, alleles uh, IA and IB are codominant. However, allele IO is recessive to both of those. So A and B, IA, IB are codominant. IO is recessive to both of those alleles. Therefore, in the genotype IA, IA, well, that is obviously going to have the phenotype. Uh, a, blood group A. An individual with blood group IAIO, well, as A 
is dominant over O, again, the phenotype would be blood group A. IB, IB, blood group B. IB, IO. B is dominant over O, so they would be blood group B. IA, IB, where well, they are co-dominant, so both are expressed in the phenotype. So they have the blood group AB. For an individual to be blood group O, they must have two copies of, of, the, uh, of the allele O. So IO, IO. So what does that actually mean? Well, uh, an individual that is in blood group A expresses uh, the IA allele. Okay. That allele codes for an antigen. So the immunoglobin A is a protein, an antigen, on the surface of the red blood cells. And we can see it here. So blood group A uh, possess these A antigens on the surface of their uh, red blood cells. At the same time, in their plasma, they will have an antibody to uh, the B antigen, and we call this anti-B antibody. So let's think about that. So blood group B must contain uh, IB in their genotype. They have antigen B, or the B antigen, on the surface of their red blood cells, and they possess the anti-A antibody. If a person who was blood group A received a transfusion of blood group B blood, their anti-B antibodies in their plasma would attach to the B antigen on the surface of the red blood cells, uh, causing those red blood cells to, um, to agglutinate. Okay, and just the, in, in the way that a normal immune response, and that would cause a blood clot, um, uh, and that would cause an aneurysm and very quickly cause severe problems, perhaps death. Okay, a person with blood group AB, they have immunoglobin I and immunoglobin B in their genotype. They possess uh, the antigen A, oh sorry, that's the B one, isn't it? Antigen B and antigen A on their red blood cells. They do not contain any anti-A or anti-B uh, antibodies, which is important, obviously, because otherwise they could bind to the antigens there. Um, and we'll come back to what we call a... This means that they can be what's referred to as the universal recipients, because they have no antibodies for A or for B, if the blood group of a person was uh, AB rhesus positive, rhesus is another, um, another antigen that I'm not going to discuss too much, but if they are AB positive, they are known as universal recipients and can receive any blood in a transfusion. Blood group O, IO, IO, remember O, the allele O is recessive to A and B. They have no A or B antigens on their surface. However, in their plasma, they do receive, they do contain anti A and anti B. But there are no antigens on their surface. Blood group O, so if they are blood group O negative, O rhesus negative, they are referred to as universal donors, meaning that a 
uh, an individual whose blood group O could donate their blood to any other blood group. Okay, because they don't have those antibodies, sorry, those antigens on their surface. Let's get back to the inheritance of that then. So somebody who is AB would have to have uh, IA and IB in their genotype. Uh, if they were crossed with uh, somebody in blood group O, they would be IO, IO. The male here is AB, so IA, IB. And the female is blood group O, so IO, IO. And what we find then is half of the offspring, 50% would be blood group A, IA, IO. Remember A is dominant over O. Another 50%, the other half, be IB, IO. B is also dominant over O. Here, two um, individuals who are heterozygous, so blood group A, IA, IO, and blood group B, IB, IO. After meiosis, their alleles would e or their gametes would either contain the allele IA or IO. Here, IB or IO. And all four, um, uh, all four phenotypes could be present in their offspring. So 25% would be IAIO, making them blood group A. 25% would be IBIO, making them blood group B. 25% would be IAIB, AB. And the last 25%, IOIO, blood group O. So, uh, two parents, Mr. and Mrs. Shah, blood groups are AB. What is the probability that a first child would have blood group A? Well, it's 25%. Okay, IA, IA, 25%. Uh, Jane is blood group A and her son is blood group O. Which of the following men could not be his father? So the son is blood group O, so it must be IO, IO. Jane is blood group A but has a son with blood group O, so she must be IA, IO. <coughs> Therefore, the only um, the only father that could not donate a O uh, or an I O allele would be Percy, who is A B, because he is A uh, I A I B. Frank could be I A I O. So perhaps John is blood group O. So obviously he could, and Kevin is I B I O. Perhaps. Okay, the only one that definitely cannot is Percy there, his blood group A B. Other examples of uh, uh, of codominance and multi allelism. So when they uh, when a gene has multiple alleles, we get these dominance hierarchies. Now we've seen that in the blood groupings. We know that A and B are codominant, and they're both dominant over O. Here we have a uh, even more alleles. So in rabbits, um, each allele is dominant to the ones below and recessive to the ones above. So the allele for the agouti phenotype is the most dominant. Then the allele for the chinchilla phenotype, and then the Himalayan phenotype, and the, finally the albino phenotype is the most recessive. So we get this hierarchy, an order of dominance from the agouti down to the albino. 
Okay, so the uh, possible genotypes for the full colour or the agouti phenotype, well, they could be homozygous for A, so CA, CA, or they could be heterozygous for the uh, allele A and the chinchilla, because A is dominant over the chinchilla, so it could be CA, uh, C, CH. A is also dominant over the Himalayan, so CA, H, CH, sorry, and it's also dominant over the albino, so CA, uh, and then the recessive A for albino there. Well, the chinchilla, it is dominant over all except the agouti, so CH, 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 or CH, 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 God, this is a bit confusing, isn't it? Uh, but you get the idea, so it's uh, chinchilla is dominant over Himalayan, and chinchilla is also dominant over uh, albino. Himalayan, well, it could either be the homozygous for Himalayan, C capital H, C capital H, or it could, because Himalayan is dominant over albino, it could be C capital H, C lowercase a. To be albino, they must be recessive A, recessive A for the albino which was the lowest on the uh, order of dominance. Okay, and I think that's everything I'll do on uh, co-dominance and multiple alleles. I will uh, also upload a video of me completing a question that involves co-dominance and multiple alleles from the question booklet. If you've got any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Right, thanks very much.